That has to be one of the most favorite fight songs of all time. And who better than Trojan fans to wake up to that every single Saturday morning, God forbid Friday nights anymore, and have to deal with uh, the opposition hating that song. <laughs> anyway, I'm Steve Levy. I am the publisher of USC24x7.com. I have a ton of fun with this. It's completely therapeutic for me. 64 years of following the Trojans, being a part of Cardinal and Gold, the Trojan family, all these kids that come through the program, amazing coaches, had our ups and downs, like any program that's been around as long as USC football. Uh, but throughout all of that, the true fans, and I think you could say this about just about any college football program or any sport for that matter, the true fans don't leave. The true fans speak up, they get mad. They always support the kids if it's amateur sports. And I don't even know what amateur sports means anymore, but um, I know that it's out there somewhere. And the love for the old game is still there. And hopefully one day they figure out all this uh, TP and transfer portal and NIL, name and image likeness, and get it right. Um, the kids obviously have made it very clear that they want their cut of the amazing uh, monetary value that they bring to each of the schools and certainly the sport that we all love. But there has to be something that preserves that the purity of college football, college sports, amateur sports. And I don't know that we can find our way back to that at this point, but you know, this build a program stabilize the environment for the overall sport, college football in this case. I don't think it's any different for basketball, soon all sports and college sports. Uh, but football is, is typically the main revenue generator for all of the sports that universities are deploying. And not all universities have all sports, uh, is what it is. And they have to do economically what they're able to do. But with NIL coming online, now the kids are able to maintain an amazing life, you know, that, that they've created for themselves. Their families have invested over time. Uh, we had a neighbor that uh, had, had three, three girls, one boy, lived across the street from us, and they were gone every weekend. Thousands of dollars traveling. Uh, coaches, trainers uh, for the kids, right? It, the parents had a dream. The parents, uh, I don't wouldn't say forced their kids to do what they were doing, but kids can't make a decision to go traveling around the country to chase a dream that, you know, parents have for them. Uh, do I see that as wrong? Would I, I didn't do that with my kids. Uh, we played all the, you know, AYSO when we were down in Southern California. I coached, I refereed, we, we did all of that. Came up to Northern California and my daughter uh, and my two boys were very active in sports, but you know, only one time <laughs> did I go from what I would call the pure youth leagues, recreation leagues for one of my kids to uh, NJB. We did it for one spring. And I remember going over to the, the program director for the rec league and telling them that, hey, we won't be here uh, at your program in the spring every single Saturday. Uh, we're going to try NJB for my youngest child. And we did it. And uh, I watched him out there playing a team sport in his mind, but it clearly became something that the coach wanted individual statistics. And uh, he would scream at the kids to shoot the ball, shoot the ball, not pass the ball, shoot the ball. So the entire experience, in my opinion, just proved to me, at least as a parent, that going up the ladder competitively from a, a, a rec league family, if you will, to, you know, these highly competitive sports for a child isn't always the best path. And it clearly wasn't for us, but I let my my son at the time make those decisions, and and he made the right decision. He came up to me and he goes, "Dad, I'll finish, 
my commitment to NJB uh, for the spring, but I'm, I'm not interested in coming back. I remember I patted him on the back and I said, always finish. If you start something, finish something. If you want to do something, do it with your full commitment and don't look back. And uh, I was proud of him. He, he did just that. Uh, and I know that every Saturday morning, when and we had to drive in the San Jose versus literally could almost walk to the other league. Um, I know his heart wasn't completely in it, but when he said to me that he would finish, he did. And uh, I was very proud of him. And I never looked back. And I remember going back to the rec league uh, director and a good friend of mine after 23 years here in Northern California. And I told him about you know, what we went through. And uh, he nodded his head and he goes, you're not the first, you're not going to be the last. Everybody, he said, everybody comes back. <laughs> and you know what, until you experience that next step and, you know, some people I think love it. Uh, it wasn't for me. It wasn't for my family. It wasn't certainly for my son. Um, he went on to play high school basketball just fine. And uh, although the team didn't do very well, he, he enjoyed it. I think he and his friends had a, had a good time competing at a level that, you know, he always dreamed about with the high school level, if you will. So where am I going with this rant, <laughs> if it's a rant? The, the USC football program is caught up in something that a lot of hate is coming down towards the program. Um, you've seen my comments on Twitterville, and I, I mean what I say. Uh, hate the haters who go after USC, Lincoln Riley, uh, God bless Boomer Sooner, uh, as a fan of Oklahoma, uh, he or she, because I don't know if it's a he or she, that person. Um, they just jump, anything that happens to the Oklahoma Sooner football program was caused by Lincoln Riley. It is amazing. We're, we're in year two, everybody. Grow up, move on. You know, we lost players. We lost, you know, coaches who have come and gone. Hell, one of them just came back. Cliff Kingsbury. That's an interesting move. Um, I think the guy, you know, transitioning here to a coaching decision, uh, I think that's a gutsy move by Lincoln Riley. Uh, Cliff and he have similar capabilities, but having someone like him in the box and also during Monday through Friday, Sunday through si uh, Sunday through Friday, really, if you think about practice, having that person, that capability, touching the quarterback program with his mind and his vision and, and his ability to coach and teach, phenomenal potential here. And I tip my hat to Lincoln Riley to not be afraid to do something like that, to bring someone in that literally could replace himself. Good leaders have a secession plan. Good leaders fear not what is coming. They chase where they want to go. And they do it with a plan. And I believe Lincoln Riley has a plan. I believe Lincoln Riley has become a beacon for the USC football program to become that law of attraction uh, school that is starting to <clears throat> pick up momentum where most thought it was going to be you know, here comes USC again, but, you know, they don't have an offensive line. They don't have a defensive line. They don't understand the physicality of college football. We'll see. I mean, <clears throat> I look I look at some of the kids, <clears throat> excuse me, coming into the program, and I'm seeing exactly, exactly what needed to be done with the type of players coming in. You know, we hear a lot about physicality. We want physicality, safe physicality, obviously, and the NCAA is doing a much better job in that respect. And I think the schools are working towards that safety issues, uh, especially head-to-head -head or head-to-body uh, impacts. And the helmet technology, obviously, trying its best to come up with suitable solutions. But USC is is on the map, everybody. The The hatred towards the program and social media is that an all-time high. Pete Carroll was, is probably winking at Lincoln Riley saying, you did it. You, you brought him back, just like Pete did, just like others will after Lincoln Riley. Um, I have, I'm hoping 
that with his age, and he is very young to be at this level of the game, tip of the hat to him again, <clears throat> that he stays here a long time. But we all know that money and that brass ring, Cliff Kingsbury jumping after 30 days, for God's sakes, arguably after many years in college football, but 30 days with the Trojans, went to Arizona, now he's back. He's back exactly where he jumped off the edge to go to the NFL. So Lincoln Riley won't be here forever, but <clears throat> if for as long as we can have him and his family in Southern California, we're going to have a lot of fun. We are going to see innovation changes that uh, he is creating right now. He may not even know it because he's that type of a mind. He's that type of a head coach with an offensive flat out genius level processing you know Alex Grinch I know there's a lot of people that don't like Alex don't like his record and I'm not talking about him personally no one's gonna ever say they don't like him personally because the guy is a great guy um, I've listened to him talk I've seen him take punches right and left and he doesn't blame anybody he blames himself right uh, he doesn't blame the situation he inherited he talks about it but he doesn't blame it. Listen to how he responds to these questions from the media. This guy deserves this year. This guy deserves a chance to take this wealth of talent in year two that he has now at his beck and call and put it on the field in his vision at a much higher level. If you just go and look at last year's statistics or the previous year, but just let's, let's just do last year because that's the scope we have on Alex. All he has to do is improve 25 to 35% statistically. And with this offense and Caleb Williams in year two, for God's sakes, and the possibility of a second Heisman, I don't know, I did the math. <clears throat> doesn't have to improve that much. You know, he's got to work on some basic things. I mean, how hard is tackling? Well, it is hard if the NCAA is telling you you can't hit and you're coming off 10 years of Clay Hilton, I won't hit. I don't care what anybody likes to see on the field of play. We're going to be passive aggressive, right? We're going to talk aggressive. We're going to be passive on the field. That's what we had. And we'll see. We'll see if Alex is able to convert that. But I'm glad he's got a second year to prove himself. He deserves it. He he was part of an 11 and 3 coaching staff that was two or three plays away from being perfect and being in the playoffs. I didn't think SC was going to win uh, more than eight games last year with the new coaching staff and all that had to be converted, if you will, culturally in that locker room. So I, I'm a pretty happy Trojan family fan uh, right now, and I'm going to sign off now and wish you all uh, the best and keep the faith and never forget this music. I know I won't. Steve Levy, publisher of USC24x7.com. Have a great weekend. It's Friday, April, what is today? April 28th, my goodness. We're almost at the middle of the year, folks. August is right there. Fight on.